Unlawful to be a natural human. The ethics of medical mandates. From December 17th, 2021, it will be illegal for people who have refused to receive a permanent bodily augmentation in Queensland to visit cafes, pubs, hospitals, restaurants, theme parks, prisons, cinemas, museums, libraries, etc., regardless of whether they're healthy or virus-free. It will also be illegal for these people to work in certain jobs, such as in education, healthcare, corrections, law enforcement, and so on. Essentially, your innate human biological state will become illegal, at least in certain settings. It will become unlawful to be a natural, healthy human. Does anybody else see a huge ethical dilemma with this? Illegal to maintain your natural human biology if you want to go out and have a coffee at a cafe? Although it will be considered illegal in some settings, these people have not committed a crime. They will not need to go to court, nor will they be sent to prison. They have not done anything illegal by not accepting the prescribed medical procedure. They have simply failed to obey an unethical direction by a corrupt government. They're essentially being punished for not listening. They're being punished for not obeying. They're being punished for not doing what they're told by a government they probably didn't vote for. They're being punished for refusing to alter their innate biological state. Historically, being punished for your innate biological state isn't new. Homosexuality was once seen as a crime. It still is in some jurisdictions. Up until 1924, the punishment for gay sex in New South Wales was life imprisonment. In Victoria, gay sex carried the death penalty, a punishment harsher than British law at the time. It was considered something all men could be tempted into with criminal laws acting as a deterrent to immoral lust. In the 1800s in Australia, it was illegal for women to vote. It wasn't until 1943 that women were elected to public office. It wasn't until 1965 that Australian women won the right to drink in a public bar. Prior to 1967, Aboriginal Australians weren't even counted as people. Not because of any crime they committed, not because of any illegal or immoral activity they participated in, no simply because of their innate biological state, they were treated like outcasts and criminals. And now we're doing it all over again. Organ transplant recipients in Queensland must obey the medical direction or be denied life-saving surgery. Essentially, the government will inadvertently kill you if you don't obey them. Are doctors okay with this? Get this medical procedure or you will be barred from society, lose your job, treated like an outcast, and refuse life-saving surgery. And believe it or not, this is all in the name of public health. The health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. Am I now a prisoner? What is a prisoner? A person or thing that is deprived of liberty and kept under involuntary restraint, confinement or custody. Here's the new rule at my workplace. Continue to use the Check-in Queensland app when on campus. You'll soon see new check-in codes for buildings, replacing the campus-wide check-ins. You'll need to check in to each individual building you enter. This helps contract tracing be faster, more reliable and complete. So on a normal day, I might go to A block, then to G block, then to Q block, then to F block, and then finish the day up in V block. Of course, in each of those blocks, I've met a number of people and walked past dozens more. Each of those people will have visited their own blocks throughout the day and met other people. Eventually, there's a rat's nest of contact tracing information. Now, just say I did this for a few days and tested positive a few days later. I was considered contagious all those days I went to work. All these people have travelled all over the city and met all different people. Did this new check-in at every building rule help contract tracing be faster, more reliable and complete? No, it turned it into a big, overcomplicated mess, and that was just for one person who tested positive. Actually, do you know what would be easier? 
Just use those GPS tracking ankle bracelets that they put on prisoners and parolees. That's essentially what we're doing anyway. Benefits of being a prisoner. Free accommodation. Free clothing. Free food. Exercise. Library access. Visitation rights. Access to study materials. Free medical care. With only one downside. My liberty. Actually, with the new mandate rules, I'd be almost better off in prison. At least I'd be able to read a book in the prison library, or get free food and clothing. In real life, I have to buy my own clothing and food, pay for my own accommodation, lose my job, can't visit the library, and I can't even go outside to have a coffee. As I alluded to before, am I now a prisoner? Is there any hope? Oh yes, dear listener, there is hope. One thing that I know for sure, and one thing that the government have perhaps discounted, is lawyers. Eventually, when all of this settles down, the lawyers will smell blood. They will see an opportunity to sue the pants off the government and big business who enforced these rules. Oh, there will be class actions. Many people who suffered either physically from being harmed from procedures they didn't want, or people who were forced to lose their jobs and livelihood, or people who suffered untold mental hardship due to ongoing restrictions and mandates. There will be blood. Metaphoric blood. But blood nonetheless. The government will pay for what they've done to the people. It will be discovered and proven in court that mandates and restrictions created by corrupt government and big business caused much more harm to the social fabric than any virus ever did. 